Hey, what is up, my dudes? It is the IQ, and today we're going to be talking about Taylor Swift. You know, she released two new singles recently, and honestly, I think this era of her um, career is confusing a lot of people, so I wanted to see if there were any um, indications in her birth chart that would indicate that through her transits. And she is reaching her Saturn return soon, which is interesting. Um, if you don't know what Saturn return is, it is when you reach peak you, basically. Um, it is when you accept your old... Well, well, basically, you're getting older. That's what I mean. You accept you're getting older. You accept that you're a full-grown adult. This is where it all fully hits you. Obviously, a Saturn square, your first one when you're 21 years old, that has impact. But Saturn return is something more, um, you know, something different than that initial Saturn square, okay? When, you're, when your Saturn returns to its natal position, this is where... You either get you you can get a new job during this time. You can get married. You can have kids. This is these are like really common things for a Saturn return. Basically, whatever you've been working for, it happens. All right. How much work you put into your life from you know the day you were born until you're like 27 to 30 years old, it all unfolds during your Saturn return. And if you did not get the hint of the ages I just mentioned, your Saturn return basically happens when you're 27 to 30 years old. Anyways, you know, Taylor Swift is reaching that. She was born in 1989. Her um, 30th birthday is on, uh, let's see, 2019? December of 2019, I believe. So, you know, she, she's reaching that point sooner, like soon, you know, two years. So her Saturn is approaching her natal Saturn. Like, you know, transit Saturn is approaching her natal Saturn. And at the moment, Saturn is in 21 degrees Sagittarius, and, you know, that isn't really significant in general, but it is significant when we're talking about Taylor Swift, because her son is there in the 12th house. Also, her Uranus is chilling in the 12th house, but it's in 4 degrees Capricorn, so. Anyways, at the moment, Saturn is conjunct her son in the 12th house, and when Saturn in general just transits the 12th house, all right, let's just talk about that first before we enter how Saturn's touching her ego because the sun's ego, basic um, foundation of your personality. So when Saturn transits your 12th house, um, Saturn does a little spring cleaning, so to say, through your subconscious because the 12th house is ruled by Pisces and Neptune. It basically represents um, your dreams and not your um, ambitions. I mean, like you literally fall asleep and dream. All right, that's what the 12th, that's like a 12th house theme is dreams. Also, the 12th house represents, uh, let's say, sacrifice, um, just stuff you really want to just bury deep down inside of you. It is basically what you don't want to deal with. So you throw it in a corner, all right? That is what your 12th house is, and that's what's lurking in your 12th house. It's whatever you don't want to deal with. And with Taylor Swift, her, whatever she doesn't want to deal with, is her um, uh, ego and rebellion and humanitarianism. And when that's in, you know, that's in the 12th house, all right? That's what she's got to deal with. And Saturn, her chart ruler, so to, you know, I got to throw that out there, her sudden is in Capricorn. So her chart ruler is touching her, like, the foundation of her personality. So with that being said, um, you know herself, you know, how she appears to acquaintances is bringing out her ego at the moment. And obviously she's showing us sides that we did not expect her to have. Now, as you can see, like from her chart, you know, she has a Scorpio midheaven and we see the midheaven in celebrities rather than, you know, their ascendant. So that's pretty weird how people just, you know, think she's very innocent still. You know, her, um, I guess, identity as um, a public figure is going to change over time, especially with Pluto there, too. So, with all that change going on, I don't know how you can still see her as the speak now country star. You know, I, I don't know how you can see that. Um, when her midheavens in Scorpio, things are going to change. She has more indications of, um, being seen as a powerful person rather than, um, like a sweet little, um, country star, to be honest. 
Uh, she also has, uh, you know, the moon trying her midheaven, so I think that's what we see mostly. And also Venus squares her midheaven. And Jupiter obviously um, trines her midheaven too, but it's on a, it, you know, you can only see that through popularity. And, but, you know, the main things we see in her midheaven are her Venus and her moon. And her moon, like, when the moon trines in midheaven, it indicates someone who can make art, like, you know, make a career out of art or have a career that involves emotions. And you can tie emotions easily with career and it isn't an issue with you, you know. And with Venus square her midheaven, you know, she may be pushing, I guess, the fairness, I guess. I think that's what we're sensing and that's why people do see her. As a goody two shoes still, because of that Venus square, you know, it is pretty much forced on her public image. And, you know, it also indicates, I guess, her love life, because Venus also represents um, love. It is the planet of Taurus and Libra. So, when we're speaking of that Venus square, the only thing I can really think of is, um, you know, how people think that her love life is really pushed through her albums. And, you know, I think over time she's going to end up mastering that square because squares are hard to master and you do have to take control of them. They are your weakest spots in your personality. And you just have to, you know, try your best to make them work in your favor. And honestly, do I th I I'm not sure if Taylor Swift was doing that this whole time, but... You know, people are kind of tired of hearing about her relationship, so I think the reputation phase is going to phase out, so to say, um, that Venus square for um, good and actually make that Venus um, Midheaven square something different and portray it in a different light. If you don't know, I think I also want to throw this out there. The moon is ruled by Cancer. She does have Cancer moon. And, you know, um, Cancer represents... Uh, emotional intelligence mostly in people if someone has cancer it like you know especially in the moon you know there's an emotional intelligence to them you feel like they're a caring person okay but the downside to cancer is that they can be manipulative okay that is their downfall that is their the rough trait of cancer right there and sometimes they can just think for themselves so you know, I think we're seeing the more positive side of Cancer when it comes to her um, moon to midheaven trine. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's get back to um, Saturn though. It is ripping up her um, ego. It is taking ha it's wreaking havoc on her ego. So at this moment, she is trying to reinvent herself. She is not happy with herself at the moment. That's what it looks like. Okay, Pluto is in her first house. Okay, she is changing her identity. She's rebuilding her identity. But, you know, on the inside, when she's completely alone, she is meeting face-to-face -face with what acquaintances really see. You know, she has a big first house. She has, let's see, Mercury, um, Neptune, uh, and Venus and Saturn. Also, the um, I think the North Node's also chilling there. Like, yeah, the North Node's also chilling in the first house. I mean, she has a full house in the first so, basically, you know, she's meeting up with whatever people mainly see in the first house, okay? People mainly see Saturn, all right? So, Saturn's, Saturn and her ego are talking, okay? Her karma and her restrictions on herself and her hard work is meeting with her ego. And they're cleaning out her subconscious and what makes, you know, what holds her back, you know, she's, you know, realizing what is holding her back and what is being an issue for her. And this is the start of um, what is to come in her life. That's what it seems like. You know, she's approaching her Saturn return, like I said. And once um, Saturn hits zero degrees Capricorn and then hits her Uranus, you know, she Saturn and Uranus is going to meet up, all right? And Saturn and Uranus are pretty similar planets, you know, Aquarius rules over Uranus, but it also sub-rules Saturn, so there is a Saturn-esque quality to Uranus. And, you know, when Saturn and Uranus work together, obviously Saturn's going to build these structures and, you know, do some trial and error with things. And Uranus is going to be the one communicating whatever Saturn's doing and spreading the word about whatever Saturn is making. And, you know, Uranus will connect with the people, and Saturn will build what, what has to be built for society or for others. 
you know, some people do not think uh, Capricorn or Saturn is a very generous sign. And, you know, sometimes they do think about themselves first. But you have to note that Capricorn does still come after Libra. In Libra represents other people, open enemies, all that fun jazz, okay? That is where the marriage house is, all right? That, that's all, you know, that's all seventh house shit, okay? Capricorn's a tenth house. It is public image. And obviously, you know, Capricorn do, does hold people to their heart still. And they know that they do need to consider others' opinions when it comes to building these things, okay? They can't just build anything they want. They can't just do anything they want, okay? There are other people in the way, and they understand that, all right? They're not Aries. That is very, um, uh, let's see, self-focused. Because Aries rules over the first house. It rules over the self. And, you know, Aries is going to go after whatever they want. And people are going to follow. Capricorn's not going to do the same thing as Aries. They're going to take their time. They're going to make sure others' considerations, you know, are, you know, met, of course. To make, because, you know, they want things to last. And they know that if they want things to last, they have to make those things, you know, a little bit agreeable. And this is what Capricorn will push. If you don't know, Libra does exalt Saturn. So there is a fair side of Saturn, too, like, you know, but that is a side that really people do not see. People see the rough parents rather than the one who's saying, hey, you got to do this. But, you know, other people do matter and we have to still look out for them. So, you know, when Uranus and Saturn are going to meet, they're going to build something and try to help people with it. And obviously then Saturn's going to hit her ascendance. And, you know, this may, you know, be a health change, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know what this necessarily means for her. Usually this means that someone is going to make more healthier decisions. Um, you know, they're going to become more responsible. And obviously when it hits her ascendant, it's going to hit her Mercury too. So she's going to become more serious in thought at this time when she's going to go through her Saturn return. Obviously, this is just the beginning. Saturn, her Saturn return is not full peak at the moment. And then, you know, Saturn's gonna hit Neptune next. And basically when Saturn and Neptune work together. This is interesting, okay? Saturn brings Neptune's wildest dreams come true, okay? So, that transit Saturn's going to take all of Taylor Swift's, um, Neptunian issues or Neptunian dreams and bring them to reality and bring them to herself. And I do want to point out, you know, Taylor Swift's Neptune is in her first house and her son's in her 12th. And with that being said, she may have some identity issues, all right? She may um, feel like she's being swayed one way more, more than the other, and she may not have control of that. And she may have to take some time to actually really figure herself out and what she really wanted in life. So I do want to say that that is what usually um, Neptune the first and Sun the twelfth really represents. They represent a you know a hard time grasping you know what they truly want and what they truly stand for at all times. You know they do have an identity, but they feel like they can be swayed by others more often than you know them making all the decisions in their life. So I feel when Saturn actually really hits Neptune in, you know, um, all of her, um, like, questions that haven't been answered when it comes to herself will be answered to her. And she will not take anyone's shit anymore because that is, I think that is what Neptune in the first, you know, does. I think it does take people's shit. And, you know, with the son in the 12th house, you know, it, it, it is starting right now. You know, she is going to stop giving a shit and her midheaven in Scorpio is going to, I think, show the more powerful and more, you know, out there Scorpio rather than the more privates and hidden Scorpio. And, you know, Saturn will eventually hit peak and, you know, it'll chill with her natal Saturn. And basically, you know, her natal Saturn's in the first house. It opposes the moon and Jupiter. Uh, let's see what else. <laughs> um, also sextiles Pluto. So that is what she's in for. Um, basically, her emotions and Jupiter will take a toll on her um, Saturn return. 
Which, oh boy, that, that might not be the most fun experience, but she's going to be at a tug-of-war with, um, you know, her motions, her expansion, and her restriction. All of that is going to come into play in her identity, and she will shape herself with her emotions and her popularity it, through her work. But, you know, all those things will come through, and she's going to, make, you know, structure herself through all of that, you know. Her emotions and, you know, her popularity is going to massively come into play when, it, when her Saturn return hits. And all of that stuff is in her sixth house, you know, house of work and service. So it really does start with her work, which is her music. So um, that is really going to show through in her music, her Saturn return, especially, you know, the eras after reputation. That is definitely going to show. All right. And she's going to become a totally different person, hopefully for the better. You know, I always wish a good Saturn return onto anyone, all right? It's it's just what I do. And then, you know, Saturn will hit her natal Venus, and her natal Venus is in one degree as Aquarius. So this is going to be way later, right? And I feel like this is when she's going to truly um, get rid of her um, I date everyone uh, the public image, all right? Because Venus squares her midheaven, like I said. So I think this is when she's going to truly... Um, scrap that image, all right? That is when she's gonna get serious about her love life and, you know, try to settle down with someone. I feel like that's what's gonna happen. I think she's going to fully scrap the love songs. You know, that's what I think is going to happen. That is what could happen. Who knows, all right? I don't predict the future, but I think that is what is being indicated. You know, she's gonna become more serious about love and money. And that is just what's going to go down. Then, you know, Saturn will hit her north node. and So, you know, she has to become true to herself and do what she wants to do. That is what her life purpose is. And once Saturn hits that, obviously, that's going to become more structured and more clear. And that is basically her Saturn return. Uh, it's going to go through a lot of planets. And that is just what's starting at the moment. Because, you know, her basic... Um, you, you know, identity. Her son is being touched by her chart ruler, aka Saturn, at the moment. And it's really embarking a new era for her. And she's going to have to balance her power and her um, wants and needs and everything. Because like I said, you know, Saturn does exalt Libra. And Libra exalts Saturn. That's what I meant. You have to notice that. So she is going to go through um, some phases of balancing things, and her Saturn return is going to be a balancing act. It does involve her Venus, and it will involve her Midheaven. You'll, you will see all this form in her music, because this Saturn is going to touch her sixth house planets, well, her sixth house planet Jupiter and, um, you know, her moon. So her popularity and her emotions are definitely going to be affected by this and her work, you know. Basically, she's going to form, you know, herself into someone else, you know, that she wants to be. And I feel like she hasn't been, hasn't been who she wants to be for a pretty long time now. And she's just coming to the senses and she's going to become, you know... Um, final form Taylor Swift, and it's going to show through her work. Hopefully it'll be good. You know, reputation's becoming a wacky era for sure, but you know what? Only the future can tell if she will rock her Saturn return or not. Anyways, I know this is pretty long, but honestly, it is weird how I just feel like, you know, saw her Saturn return out of everything, and I think it really is, you know, making its mark right now, okay? It's cleaning out the 12th house, and once it reaches the first, it will really just change her world, okay? People are going to view her differently when they meet her, and it's going to affect her work, which will affect her midheaven. And her um, OG persona back in the day when she was a country star, no one's going to remember that at the end of the day when her Saturn return is done. And that is a pretty wild concept, uh, but honestly, that is just what I see in her charts. Could I be wrong? Yes, astrology may not be real, obviously, you know. I just love looking into, um, uh, let's see, what what was I going to say? Like, I just love looking into um, coincidences when it comes to astrology because I find it really interesting. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, 
Uh, I, I had fun making this, to be honest. I, I wanted to discuss um, Taylor Swift because she does have an, an interesting um, point in her career going on at the moment. And especially her um, Midheaven ruler transiting her first house. Uh, you know, it's, it's getting interesting for her. You know, she is going to really become herself fully, um, if she isn't already. Obviously, she is herself, but I think it is go she's going to really become herself throughout the course of the next following years. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'm going to go now. Peace out, hug a tree, um, and I love you guys. <laughs>